Hello and welcome to another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. I'm Wayne Highlander, National Sales Manager for Bone Adhesives. And I'm Rob Johnson, newly appointed head chef of Chef Boyardee. How's that? Oh, dude. Huh? I, I owe you big time, man. Come on, baby. I, I well, I'll know. I'll know tomorrow. Uh, Judy's making the uh, spaghetti. You sent me the most elaborate <laughs> spaghetti recipe I have ever seen in my life, and uh, my wife is all about it, man. She, we went out and bought everything you said to buy. We're gonna do the, and it's like a fourteen hours of cooking. But it's, thank you. It's a process, okay? That's why you make so much of it. Like I said, that that, 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 that recipe that I gave you. That's about 30 pounds of sauce, meatballs, and sausage. That's what so Judy said. It's, it's I mean, only... it's going to last you for a year. Well, she cut the recipe in half. I, this is a, I was going to recommend that. Yep. Yeah, it's just the two of us. So, all right. Thank I mean, you, we, we, the, as soon as it cools down, we bag it in like one gallon Ziplocs. Mm hmm. And freeze it and then start doling it out to the kids each kid will get a couple of bags i mean it's wow it's crazy how much sauce you, even splitting it in half you're going to be shocked oh, i'm not i can tell how it's much like, sauce but, yeah so thank you for that i didn't realize it was so hard until i started writing it all down i pre i knew that was a lot of work for you seriously <laughs> i really do and you took pictures of every step of the way so i, I really do appreciate that i know i hounded you so thank you well, I just hope it, uh, it it'll definitely be worth it. So tomorrow right. morning, tomorrow morning you'll be uh, I'll be uh, in hog, hog heaven. Yeah. All right, hey, Robbie. Before we get going, yeah, got to give a shout out to Pauline. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow will be thirty-eight years. Oh, congratulations, man! Thirty-eight years. Yes. Congratulations. That's uh, uh, very excited for you. Yeah. I uh, told you that I've been married 40 years, right? Of course. First, 30, first 38 years were easy. It's the last two that were yeah. the tough one, huh? Yes. No, congratulations, man. That's pretty darn cool. And you didn't get her anything for the 40th, or did you? No, you did. Uh, you went out and got uh, her flowers, right? Absolutely, I did. Yeah. Aren't you going to ask me what I got her for her anniversary? I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. What, what did you get her for your anniversary, Rob? 38 years, what is that? 38 years, I didn't look up what 38 years was, but this year I got her uh, lumbar pillows, holiday personalized lumbar pillows. I'll send you a couple pictures of them. I got her a Halloween, a Thanksgiving, and a Christmas. Hmm, I look forward to those. Yeah, and the lumbar, the things are, like the the Halloween pillow is skeletons with all the grandkids name under it. Oh, that's nice. Skeletons with the kids. That's yeah. nice. Pauline well, loves that kind of stuff. What do you wait? What is what is like a, a lumbar pillow do? Lumbar, you know, they're like 12 by 22 inches. Okay. Right? Like that big. Yeah. Oh, 12 by 22. Like all pillows. And you put it no no you lumbar you know you put it on the back mm. of your when you're sitting on a chair oh so they're not for bed they're for for like in a watching tv yeah, yeah you know like you, you see it on the couches and stuff lumbar pillows. you guys don't sit up in bed and watch tv do you uh, sit no okay no we lay down yeah cool all right yeah. good i'm not crazy about watching tv in bed no i'm not either i i'm not a i i, yeah. I don't I don't just go to sleep too quick. Yeah. Yeah. Once I'm laying down, it's over. Yeah. Amen. All right, Rob. We got a lot of ground to cover. Um, I was thinking about this, and I was hoping I would remember this because I was uh, driving uh, as I this crossed my mind, and it you know we talked about last one of our other episodes about the the, the fisherman that got caught uh, cheating with a walnut walleye tournament, uh, but this is not related to that. Um, I was in a bass tournament once and I was paired up with a big name fisherman. Like this guy was very well known in the area. I mean, he was a, always on the leaderboard and, and a super good fisherman. And I thought, wow, what a thrill to be going fishing with this guy, right? And um, as we were fishing, he caught a small fish. You know, during the heat of the day, we're having a decent day, but not a great day. 
he caught a small fish. It was too, it wasn't going to help his weight any at all. And it got off the hook and it was bouncing around on the boat, on the, on the, on the floor of the boat. Right. And he kicked it out into the water. And it really, it just kind of turned me off. You know what I mean? That he was so focused on winning that he lost his appreciation of the sport and the fish. And it just kind of, I just, just rubbed me the wrong way. And I thought to myself, like, I don't want to ever lose the appreciation of the art of sanding fishing hardwood floors and how much the craft of that has always meant to me my whole life and how much I enjoyed it. Uh, and I, you know, knowing how hard it is too. And actually, you know, I've had people say debate whether, okay, do you, Wayne, do you think hardwood floors, is it an art or is it, is it not an art? Um, what, what side do you, you land on that, Rob? Oh, anybody who's been to my training knows where I'm at with that. It's not a service business. We are not a service industry. We are craftsmen and it's art. Yeah. I mean, with everything that we do to a floor, color, sheen levels, texture, uh, all of that stuff is all in the eye and the feel. It's not, we're not laying pipe, you know, it's e easy now. <laughs> But no, I, anybody who doesn't think that this is not a craft, and it's a hard craft too. Mm -hmm. This is not an easy craft. I mean, I mean, we've done it. We, we know the deal. Mm -hmm. We know what everybody's going through out there. It's it's tough, but no, it is it is art. I mean, think about it. We're you know we're waiting for stuff to dry to make sure that everything looks okay because. We just still don't know what's going to happen or what could happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I, um, you know, we all see these fancy floors on social media and what have you, and I love them. And we, you know, we all, all love that, you know, with the, with the cool stuff that's out there, but I also don't, don't ever want to get take for granted or be disheartened, you know, for guys that, that have never had one of those high profile jobs. I mean, there is so much satisfaction to me. In a standard straight lay sand and finish and you when you master every aspect of that job i mean even even a scraper that is that is cutting perfectly uh, you know when you're going around scraping the edges and it's just peeling back that wood beautifully you know what i mean it's sharpened perfectly your sanders your your edging is super flat and you're not leaving a lot of edger marks just that just the craftsmanship involved in that i think is beautiful and i don't want to ever ever lose that you know how much I, I appreciated that not leaving any scratches behind or not losing sight of how how that fresh sandpaper is cutting that that white oak floor and exposing that you know what's underneath it and um you know or a perfectly stained job where it's even from wall to wall you know what i mean yeah. all those things i i really think that yeah you may not have a high profile job that's on social media that everybody gets to look at and you know all these things but Damn it! There's a great deal of satisfaction to me, and something very honorable about just hell. Even even that feeling of a T-bar gliding across the floor with fresh finish underneath it. You know what I mean? When it's laying down beautiful, and and you look back at the floor and it looks like glass. Yeah, uh, I I think there's just something. Just... There's a lot of satisfaction in that. Yeah, a guy. Uh, it's funny you said that because I just saw a guy up um, on Instagram, and. Yeah, like you said, everybody loves to put their, you know, big time profile jobs out there. But this guy, it was his first cut and it looked like it could have been, you know, 10 or 12 inch, 180 year old. You know, the floors I'm talking about, yeah. you know, right now it would be a subfloor for most guys. But I love when a floor guy, including myself, I'm going to pat myself on the back here. I'm going to take one from me. Okay. I used to love a job like that. Yeah, they were going to be miserable. You know, it was going to be absolute misery. And I loved that that guy, he was taking video of his first cut. And he happened to be using my favorite Bona HD belt sander. Okay, the Bona mm. belt HD. Love that machine. Everybody knows I yeah. do love that. And I think that's what caught my eye first. But then when I looked at, you know, that top nailed, crowned and the guy was making you know a couple of passes and it was just barely cutting half of the board and i was like oh yeah 
this is going to be, this is what separates the men from the boys. I know that I'm not supposed to say things like that, but that was, I can't wait. I hope he puts up more pictures when he's done because those are the ones that I think are the best for a craftsman are the ones that like people are looking at their floor going, no way. There's no yeah. way he can bring this floor back. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that I love too. Well, and those are the ones that require the most patience. You know what I mean? Because they <laughs> are, you got to go through it, man. You got to go through every step. But if you go through every step and you don't razzle dazzle it, you'll get there and you'll find a beautiful floor underneath it. And I'm going to say something else too, that, you know, as I was driving home from Michigan, I had a long 10 hour drive home and I was thinking about it on the way home that, you know, there's something else to consider. And I'm going to mention some words that will just dis dis describe existing floors that we sometimes run into, right? You, you, we run into floors that have many flaws in them uh, in disrepair and they've been abused over the years and they have signs of wear and tear and maybe neglect or they've been uncared for. But with a great deal of putting your head down and grinding and polishing and perfecting, you can turn those floors into something beautiful. And I can use those same exact words to describe some people. Abused and neglected and uncared for and wear and tear. And I, I think in our industry, sometimes you, you know, there, there are people that have struggled with addiction or, or alcohol or those type of past issues. I think that this trade is a great place for second chances. You know what I mean? That people that and there's a and I that 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 have that have done that and and had those issues and put their head down and worked their butts off and and grinded and everything and 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 also turned into something beautiful. So uh, there's no shortage of examples of that. I've known so many people in our industry that have that have had th those kind of issues and and in a way the flooring industry kind of has been uh, you know a savior to them. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I and because it's hard work. And if you put it in, you know what I mean? You can take a, a floor and you can make it something beautiful again. And I think there's the people in our industry that sometimes have struggled with those issues that it's done the same thing for them. It's almost they kind of parallel them the, each other in a way. You know, you see what I'm saying? No, I I work with a guy. I work with a guy who he had been in Vietnam, he got kind of messed up from Vietnam. And turned out, you know, he ended up with a pretty good drug problem. He spent time in jail. Um, he really just kind of kicked around. He was not a hardwood floor guy. Um, he had just kind of answered an ad that my dad had thrown out, you know, looking for the seasonal help. And um, <laughs> the funny part was is how hard we work at this, but it turned his life around. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just gave him everything that he was looking for. And I remember one day he goes, you know, the beauty is the, the most beautiful part of this. It's the struggle, mm -hmm. the struggle, you know, and for, to come from, you know, you hear from other people, but I had known what he had been through, you know, because him and I were kind of roommates through the years when we were traveling and stuff. And, uh, you know, the stories and uh, of what he went through. And then where he ended up, he ended up being a, a you know, when, when I left my dad's company, he stayed, he turned into the foreman. I, I mean, it really turned his life around and he loved it, but that was part of what he loved about what we do was the struggle. Well, you know, sometimes when you, when it, for what I like about hardwood floors, it's like, in the end of the day, it's, it's me against that floor. And when I don't have to talk to anybody, and you just put your head down. You don't, and a lot of people that that that's how they're they're wired. They they don't want to do a lot of talking. They don't want to have to interact with a lot of people. Just give me that floor, and let me put my talents to it, and let me let me let me do what I can with this with this, you know, this piece of flooring, and see what I can do with it. And I I think it appeals to a lot of people that that have maybe been in that situation. That you know what I don't need to talk to anybody. You know, I mean, I, I, I've got my in front of me, I got what I got to do and I know what I how I can get there and put my head down and just do it. And then you become rewarded for that. And I like that part of this because there is great satisfaction in 
and I don't care who you are. Everybody needs a, that attaboy, a pat on the back. And um, I like the fact that these jobs, sometimes they're only a week long or two weeks long or whatever. So you get to see, the, that's one thing I really liked about it. I, I, I was running a jackhammer before I got in this industry. I, I ran a jackhammer at a sewage plant. Okay, let me tell you something. There's not a hell of a lot of satisfaction in that. There's just, there's just oh. not. <laughs> all work is honorable, but all I can see is the three stooges. Man, and you just know. jackhammer in through some kind of pipe and then... Man, you talk about a miserable, hard job, man. And uh, we weren't jackhammering on the ground like you see people jackhammering on, like, on the street. We were blowing out walls at a 90 degree angle with a 90 pound jackhammer all day. So mm. that, that's a hard job. So um, that, that, that's what I love about the trade is that in, in a short amount of time, you get to see the satisfaction of a beautiful job. And, and most of the time you're seeing a grateful homeowner or a builder that like really appreciates it now more than ever because it's harder to find guys. So I love the fact that this is a great career for people that need a second chance, maybe. You know what I mean? And I'll tell you, I know more than I can tell you of people that maybe struggle with addiction or alcohol or 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 things in the past or whatever. That it, it, it starts you at zero. You're like you know what? None of that matters. Um, it's a, this is a, the the trade would be a great place for you. So I don't know. Just on the way home, I was just kind of thinking about it. And uh, thought maybe we would talk about it a little bit. No, that guy that I, uh, uh, that was his story. That was ex his exact story. Okay. He was, he was down. He was down and out. And it was just amazing to see what he turned into after about 10 years. I mean, the, the change that he went through in his life and everything was just amazing. Well, there's something about learning a craft that instills confidence. And then, you know, you, you know, a little bit better, a little bit more, a little bit more responsibility. And then pretty soon you, you're, you're, you turn around, you're a craftsman. You're doing something that, that, you know, people with college degrees can't do in, in you know, fancy house or whatever that, that would love to be able to have the skills or even the, I, even myself now, like, I, I, I don't want to do, I don't want to, like, I got, I, I need to replace my front porch. It's too hard. I don't want to do it. I've done it all. I've done all that. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, there's people that need the service. And um, so I just think there's something about that, man, that, uh, that, then you, that, that instills confidence. Uh, and there's nothing, nothing more honorable to me than hard work. I don't give a damn what, what, if you're a shoe shine guy, or if you're, if you're, you're digging a ditch or whatever, I, 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 I just respect the hell out of anybody that, that puts their head down and works their butt off. Um, so I don't know. I just, you know what uh, else? Uh, I'll tell you that that guy that I was talking about. You know what else he loved? He huh. loved being part of a crew. He loved being yeah, part of the yeah, crew. Okay, yeah. there are some, and I've said this before. I I love being on a team. I think that's why I like um, working in the family business and everything, is because we we did have a big crew. We had like an eight man crew, all on the job at the same time. We did some you know some big projects and everything. And uh, there was that whole thing of relying on the guy next to you. You know, he's got to keep his stuff going so you can keep going. And everybody, mm -hmm. you know, everybody yeah. chasing the uh, the same rainbow there. Um, he loved it. I mean, that was another. He, and I'll tell you, another thing that was great about him was he was tough on the younger guys that didn't appreciate being on a crew, being part yeah. of the team you know that kind of thing so it was it was a great time he was uh that, that was a really that was a great 10 years of my life working with him and learning a lot from him i i also think there's a very important word that that comes along with this and that word is trust uh sometimes when you lose that where people trust you and uh now you 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 get that back you know what i mean and and, and people depend on you and you know you're that guy putting that coat on and um you know at the end of the day it's all on your shoulders and what have you and i think there's something beautiful about that and and what that trust comes again that, that confidence that, that that comes with that and i, I think that that uh, those things come back to you that just like comes back to that floor that was beat up and worn out and and abused and whatever that, that you bring the oil back to it you bring the shine back to it you bring all the you know whatever back to it i think those things come back to to you as a person as well 
And um, so I love it. I love it when I see uh, everybody needs a second shot, man. Sometimes the third shot. And uh, I, I love it when guys get a chance to do it and they, and they, and they, they take that, that shot and they, they do something with it. So I think this, we talk a lot about the floor industry. I think the floor industry has probably saved a lot of people's life uh, for that reason. Uh, good, hard work. Sometimes some people need it, need, need that. I was, I was talking to someone not too long ago that was, uh, that went to a, maybe in fact it was you, I think you were in that conversation, where prisoners were hand scraping floors in prison. Oh, yeah. For um, 30 yeah, cents you know. a day. Yeah. <laughs> and working harder than anybody. Maybe you can tell us that story, Rob. I thought that was interesting. Well, um, the guy's name was Mike Sundell. And he had left the, the previous company you and I had worked for. And somehow he got, um, I, I don't know how he got it. I don't know how he figured out how to do this. But he had two prisons down in South Carolina, two maximum security prisons that were, they had set up hand scraping floor stations. And he said one, you know, one joke, he said, yeah, I'm not going to mention the name of the company. He said, but when you see this such and such company and says Amish hand scraped floors, he said it was scraped by my boys. In okay? prison. In prison. So I was like, you know, I can't believe that you're you're doing this in a prison. This is insane, you know. I said, he goes, uh, he goes, you know, usually they just made one mistake, you know. Somebody murder somebody, it's, you know, they just made a mistake. He said. So I said, you're giving these guys seven pound sharp scrapers. I said they're they're convicted felons, and he said, listen. What you don't understand is most of these guys have a family. Most of these guys know that they screwed up. They're just looking for another chance. He said people are standing in line to get involved with this hand scraping thing that they were doing at the prisons. Hmm. He said, because once you go to prison, you can't provide for your family anymore. He said, now they're, you know, they're paying them a couple of bucks an hour, I think. And it was below minimum wage or, you know, whatever a, Whatever a prison can pay, that was, you know, it doesn't seem like much, but these guys were having a chance to send something back to their family and still feel, he said, we never had a problem. He goes, yeah, we had to go through metal detectors and everything, but he goes, people did not want to screw up one bit because this was such a great opportunity. Hardwood floors, a great opportunity. What what it cracked me up is that you were saying that these guys work their tail off. Like you think, all right, well, what's the incentive? I would just, you know, I wouldn't work that hard or whatever. But it was the opposite of that. Yeah, yeah. And they were paying him. I think they paid him by the piece or by the hour. He said, but everybody wanted in on that gig, and he, he goes, that was like, um, you know, uh, what do they call that? Piecework. Nah, not piecework. But when you're uh, it's gonna drive me nuts. You got this gig if you had good behavior. Okay. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, however, yeah. you were rewarded for good behavior by going <laughs> by being able to go and hand scrape floors. Wow. Because he said the other thing about guys in prison is there's nothing to do. You know, there's there's not a lot to do. He said, that's why this was, uh, you know, the guys who were on good behavior things, they were the ones who were, um, that's how they were rewarded, was getting oh. on this crew. It was crazy. I mean, I, 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 he was talking to me about it a, a while. I saw him at um, the, a couple of NWFA conventions ago. And uh, when he started telling me, he said, hey, Mike, what are you doing now? And when he, I, I just started cracking up. I said, only you could have figured out mm -hmm. how to how to get this going. Well, we started off this episode um, talking about, um, I, I don't want to ever lose the the passion for this and, and I don't want to ever take for granted. I hope people don't take for granted because they're, they're not seeing their floors on social media that it's a 400 square foot room and it's just four walls, that it's not as important as another floor that's a high profile floor. There is beauty and honor and art in all of this, just the, Taking a floor from the condition it was in and bringing it up to what you can do with it, I, I that 
I hope that it never goes away for people because that doesn't for me. I still appreciate a floor that's just just a regular routine floor, nothing nothing fancy about it. As as much as I do, uh, as long as it's done right, you know what I mean. It's done right and it's it's done it's beautifully flat and everything. Then to me, that's that's just as a, as, a, as important as one that's uh, a fancy floor that we see uh, and probably <laughs> probably made more money in some cases than some of those floors that we're seeing. So there's not a damn thing wrong with that. You know, when Bum was uh, I don't know, I think he was around twelve. Um, we had gone. He was really starting to you know, run some, operate some equipment. And, you know, he was really starting to sand floors with me uh, during the summer. And we went into this one kitchen, old house, probably uh, close to a hundred years old, maple kitchen floor. And it had the asbestos tile on top. And so everything, you know, was stained and you had the lines after they took the tile up. And then, you know, it was a, it was a disaster, you know? Mm -hmm. It was a disaster. And the the lady, when we're getting there unloading everything, she's like, you know, uh, I know you didn't know what the floor looked like when you did the estimate because of the tile and, you know, just do the best you can. And I was like, yeah, no problem. You know, and, and Bum's looking at me like, oh, my God, you know what? And I'm really, I kind of know that this is going to look good. Mm -hmm. The tile and the glue and everything was dry, all dry. So actually i think the tile did a great job of protecting the floor okay yeah yeah so we sanded it and he's getting all jumpy like wow wow and i'm like yeah this yeah whatever we get a coat on just as we're you know loading up after we coated it the homeowner she comes home she's standing in the doorway and she starts crying mm. and i'm like is everything okay she's like i i i just you don't know how happy I am right now. I had no idea that this floor would look. And I'm just kind of like, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, what we do. that's what we do. Right. <laughs> We're driving home. And that's what I think what really, what really set bum in on the path that he's on now with, with doing floors, mm. because I remember him driving home and, he just kept saying the same thing. He's like, I can't believe. Yeah, we changed her life. We've made her so happy. He saw the whole wow. The whole craft and art and you know what it looked like and what it looks like now and how it affects people and all that. And the whole time I'm like, Yeah, what whatever, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's funny, uh, I, I can tell you the same thing. I was in San Francisco. I still remember and it was probably in the first month or two that I was doing floors and it was uh, under linoleum. And uh, it, you couldn't really see much about the floors at all. You can really make them out just you knew they were hardwood. And we sanded them and there was diamond, walnut diamonds in the border. We had no idea, she had no idea. And everything cleaned off like Snow White. And I mean, she came home and I, I don't know who was more blown away, her or me. Yeah, I, I fell in love at that moment. You found a buried treasure. Yeah, n not with her, with the floor, Rob. Um, <laughs> Just, I mean, I absolutely was blown away that this could happen. And uh, that's probably what, what got me too. So love it. All right, Rob. Well, hey, look, man, it's uh, always a pleasure every week getting a chance to uh, visit with you. I feel like it's just like a fireside chat, just me and you talking uh, once a week. It's kind of kind of weird and nice at the same time, man. So thanks, Rob, for everything. Oh, and, my pleasure, buddy. All right. I'm going to try your spaghetti sauce here in the next few days. I'll let you know how it turns out. Oh, man, you are going to be pumped. All right. So you're going to cook it all night, right? You're going to cook it all night yep. tonight. Yep. Slow, 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 slow. Yep. Very low heat. All dialed in. All dialed in. And tomorrow morning, for breakfast, around 10 o'clock, turn it yeah. off, let it cool down all day, Okay. and reheat a little bit that night. Forget about it. All right. Best you ever had. Bada boom, bada bing. Forget All right. about it. This has been another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. Please stay tuned for another episode.